Hi, a oh, very good morning all of you. So today's paper discussion part will deal with some additional keywords and briefly review relevant literature. Uh, the objective, as you know, is to provide you information with the hope that this will help you in answering your query. And also those who are preparing for the upcoming entrances, they'll have an idea on topics that are covered in the recently concluded exam. So I hope you guys are all ready. So first we'll deal with the following topic. Actinomycosis, there seems to be a case-based question. Let me know in specific what the keywords are, additional components of question. And if you need any further clarification, we'll update that to description part of the video. As you can see, left side, it's a clinical photograph showing multiple draining abscess. And right side, it's a photomicrograph showing actinomycotic colony and smear of pus. We already discussed about sulfur granules, which is considered to be one of the most important clinical uh, features in case of cervicofacial acnomycosis. And acnomycosis as such is a chronic granulomatous suppurative fibrosing disease caused by anaerobic or microaerophilic gram-positive non-acid fast branched filamentous bacteria, right? So let me know if you need any further clarification or further information in regard to this query. Moving on, control tipping is a keyword which we received. So this is some relevant information regarding force values, location of center of rotation, etc. So you can go through it and also control tipping. As you know, the crown moves in one direction and there is minimal or no movement of root in the opposite direction. So this is useful in the traction of excessively proclined incisors when roots are normally positioned. And uh, some additional important features of control tipping center of rotation, as you can see, is at the root apex. And also the force required is 35 to 60 grams. A force to movement ratio is 7 is to 1. And loading pattern, there is minimal stress of PDL at root apex. This prevents root movement. And the stress pattern is more in cervical areas in case of control tipping, right? Moving on. Unpaid t-test is one of the keywords that you received. This we discussed extensively, not just in e-classes, but also in study club discussions, assignments, and test series. Let me know what the question was in specific, and also here is some relevant information about t-test. Unpaid t-test in specific. As you know, t-test is most commonly used method to evaluate differences in means between two groups. That is, when we compare scores, so is there any actual or statistical significance uh, between the results that are obtained or is it by chance, right? So tests of significance, as you know. So we have unpaid t-test, paid t-test and one sample t-test and also you can see corresponding examples. Do go through it and uh, let me know if you need any further clarification. Moving on, space maintainers, so there seems to be a case-based question. So there are several indications, several types of space maintainers and several indications. So briefly, let me summarize various indications of different types of space maintainers. So as you know, space maintainers are appliances that are used to maintain lost space functions and regain minor amount of space loss. And space maintainers help to guide the unerupted tooth into proper position and occlusion. So indications of removable space maintainers that are indicated when space maintenance with maintaining functional occlusion is required. Also in cases of anterior region for aesthetics in form of partial lingerie and conditions where banding of tooth is not possible, like incomplete eruption. And also in cases of children who are prone for caries and multiple loss of teeth, etc. And fixed space maintenance, we have functional type, non-functional type. So functional type, crown and bar and band and bar. Crown and bar is indicated when there is unilateral loss of first primary molar with significant loss of tooth material and abutment teeth. Band and bar, it's indicated when there is early loss of primary first molar with adequate abutment tooth structure, unilateral loss of primary first molar and also in uncooperative patients. Fixed non-functional space maintainers like band and root that indicated when there is early loss of primary molar can be used unilaterally or bilaterally. Sometimes it's given in cases of premature loss of primary canines and two band and loop space maintainers on either side of arch are indicated in case of bilateral loss of mandibular first primary molar before eruption of incisors. This can be replaced with lingual arch after eruption of permanent incisors. I hope this answers your query. Again, let me know if you need any further clarification. Also, we have Nance palatal arch, transpalatal arch, fixed lingual arch, lingual holding arch, distal shoe, and there are several indications. So if you can let me know uh, about the keywords more precisely, right? We'll narrow it down and provide additional information if required in the description part of this video. 
Moving on, oral liking planners. So these are the keywords which you received. So as you can see, a plaque like uh, oral liking planners on buccal mucosa on the left side. And also you can see ulcerative oral lichen planners on the small tongue as given in Schaeffer's. So oral lichen planners is most common mucocutaneous disease. The condition can affect either the skin or mucosa or both, as you can see in these illustrations. So it can cause bilateral white striations, papules or plaques on buccal mucosa, tongue and gingiva. Erythema, erosions and blisters may or may not be present. The involvement of oral mucous membrane is so frequent and accompanies or precedes the appearance of lesions on skin as well as genital mucous membrane, right? Moving on, the vascular tissue in TMJ, these are the keywords which we received. So you can find the structure of a TMJ, right? The sagittal section. So in fact, if you closely observe the central zone or the central part of the disc is Evascular, it's considered evascular. So the articular disc is an oval plate of fibrocartilage. So even though it's termed fibrocartilage, it consists mainly of collagen fibers with few cartilage cells. The disc on the right side, as you can see, has a thick margin, the peripheral annulus and the central depression on its inferior surface. In societal section, the disc appears to possess a thin intermediate zone and thickened anterior and posterior bands. The anterior band extends anteriorly through capsule to be continuous with tendon of lateral pterygoid. The posterior band splits into two lamina, that is upper and lower. The upper lamina, composed of fibroelastic tissue, is attached to spermotympanic fissure. The lower lamina, composed of fibrous non-elastic tissue, is attached to back of condyle. The bilaminar region contains venous plexus. The central part of this is a vascular. Moving on, treatment of T1. Uh, when the size of the tumor is less than 2 centimeters, you can see TNM staging system onto your left. And also, what is the main modality of treatment, especially in head and neck cancers, oral cancers? As you can see, based on information given in Bailey and Love, surgery remains the primary treatment modality for oral cavity cancer, where adverse pathological features are apparent. Right, post operative radiotherapy or chemotherapy are advocated depending upon the case. Small tumors less than two centimeters of lip can be managed with either a V or WHO excision under local or a general anesthesia. So, based on options, I'm sure I would have selected the right one or the most appropriate one. Let me know if you need any further clarification. Moving on, Paget's disease, a clinical base, these are the keywords which I received. So, as you can see, enlargement of right. Maxilla in this particular case, and the patient is uh, unable to use his dentition given in Schaefer's, and also radiographs of skull cotton wool appearance, right? Uh, so you can see radiograph of skull where there is a typical cotton wool appearance. Consider this very, very important. And Pelic disease, also called as uh, Pelic disease of bone or osteitis deformance, named after Sir James Paget, who is an English surgeon who described the course of this disorder and originally named the condition as osteitis deformance, right? So the excessive remodeling happens in Paget's disease, which gives rise to bones that are extensively vascularized, weak, enlarged, and deformed with subsequent complications. Moving on, heparin antagonist. These are the keywords which you received. So protamine sulfate, which is a very strongly basic low molecular weight protein, obtained from sperm of certain fish is given IV as it neutralizes heparin weight to weight. So one milligram is needed for every 100 units of heparin. This we discussed in our study club also, if you remember. It's used when heparin action needs to be terminated rapidly, as in case of uh, after cardiovascular surgery, so for heparin-induced bleeding. Now moving on to the final topic, antibiotic prophylaxis, the keywords which you received are a cardiac patient, penicillin allergy, uh, which drug is to be given. So on the right side, you can see recommendations regarding prophylaxis for bacterial endocarditis, when is it recommended and when it is not recommended. And also you can see various drugs, right? So through different routes, so oral route, unable to take oral medication, then which kind of medication, those who are allergic to penicillin or ampicillin, oral route, and those who are allergic to penicillin or ampicillin, unable to take uh, through oral uh, route. So you have various alternatives uh, for those with penicillin allergy in the form of cephalaxin, clindamycin, erythromycin, clarithromycin, cephazolin, ceftriaxin, etc. So go through this and let me know if you need any further clarification so this is based on information given in crossman latest edition
right? So these are some of the topics which I wanted to highlight in this specific video. So these are actual keywords which you received. So if you need any further clarification, as I have been trying to highlight right from the beginning, drop a comment and we'll try our level best to provide you relevant information based on additional keywords which you provide in description part of this video. So wish you all a fantastic day ahead. Love you all. Take care.